Hello and welcome to National Park Wild. I'm Eric. And when people talk about their favorite national parks, many times they think about the national parks in the West. Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, Yosemite, the list goes on. Many of the parks people like the most, including myself, are in the western part of the United States. The eastern parks get overshadowed quite often, so today, I'll be making a video talking about my favorite eastern national parks. This is the top 5 national parks in the eastern US. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everybody who subscribed to the channel because we recently hit 3,000 subscribers. This is quite surprising to me and I'm stoked because the year started with probably around 500. Maybe not even. So thank you all so much for that, and if you subscribe now, you will receive more National Park content in the future. Now regarding this ranking, there's only one major caveat I must throw in, and that is that this is based entirely off of my experience. There is no objective way to rank these parks, because the best National Parks, it's entirely based on factors that are completely out of the objective control. Not everyone agrees on what the best scenery is, not everyone sees the same things, does the same things. So this will definitely be a very subjective list. If you disagree, that is fine. It's just based on what I've done, and I'm just trying to put a spotlight on five parks in the eastern US that I definitely think are worth visiting. Let's begin. Number five is New River Gorge National Park in West Virginia. This is definitely a great park to be among the newest in the US. This one was designated just last year, and I feel that it is pretty strong. The bridge is probably the most well-known site here, and while it is stellar, I think the surrounding mountains in different areas of the park are even more impressive. There is something unique about this one. You are often at the very tops of said mountains, you're looking down on the river, and there are lush forested hills all around, and I feel that it's very comparable to what the Grand Canyon gives in terms of perspective. I do think the Grand Canyon has impressive scenery that is much superior, but I still love the way this looks. You also have a lot of fantastic hikes, going down to places like Sandstone Falls were highlights for me. The area is fairly quiet and serene, and I feel a trip to New River Gorge, you will definitely immediately understand why this deserves national park status. Number 4 is Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. The longest cave system in the world definitely packs a punch. A cave tour is pretty much a necessity to do here, because you will be quite impressed by many of the features. I did Wind Cave not long before going to Mammoth Cave, and I found that the formations in Mammoth were far more impressive. You have some truly mind-blowing stuff in Frozen Niagara, there are far more stalactites and stalagmites, Perhaps the traditional cave formations just speak to me more, but I was absolutely shocked to see how massive some of the rooms were as well. There are some unbelievable formations here, and this is a stellar park to do a cave tour in. And apart from that, there are some very solid areas above the ground. You can enjoy hikes along the Green River, look to some smaller but still very nice forested mountains, and taking the Green River Ferry is a fun experience as well. There is some decent wildlife here as well. I found a large amount of deer if you enjoy deer. I know I enjoy deer because here in South Florida we don't see that many of them. And in the caves, you are not unlikely to see wildlife here. We found several cave crickets and spiders, and there was even one bat. So this is definitely a park I recommend traveling to. I've done a video comparing it to Wind Cave, but I do find it to be much more impressive, and it is a spectacular experience. Number 3 is Virgin Islands National Park in the US Virgin Islands. Primarily on the island of St. John, this is a very unique national park. I don't typically do a whole lot of beach activities when I go to a park, but here, the beach activities are among the best. Outside of the beach, there is some good stuff, and I'll talk about that first. You have the fantastic Ramhead Trail at the very southeast tip of the island. You climb up a pretty high mountain to get one of the most mind-blowing views I've ever seen on an island. You can look all the way back, see really far. There are some unique and quirky rock formations, such vibrant colors. I feel this area was among my favorites in the park. And the beaches themselves definitely have a lot to enjoy. 
if you are into snorkeling, you will be right at home here. There are sharks, stingrays, and sea turtles galore, along with tons of colorful reef fish, and I feel this was probably the most fun I had in the park because I do enjoy snorkeling a lot, and this is among the best snorkeling I've done. On the land, and near the shore still, there's plenty of wildlife to enjoy. There are several crustaceans, there's beautiful bird watching, and the only thing that's a bit weird is that they do have deer on the island, though I believe that is an invasive species issue. But overall, Virgin Islands is definitely a park that you'll love if you enjoy beautiful beaches, whether you want to have an adventure in them, such as with snorkeling, or if you want to just relax and sit down for a while. Virgin Islands is definitely an enjoyable park. Number two is Dry Tortugas National Park in Florida. This one, despite being in my home state, I did not get to until fairly recently. It's 70 miles south of Key West, and this means it is quite difficult to get to. However, you will be rewarded with some of the best national park experiences I've ever had if you go to Dry Tortugas. Starting with the transportation to get there, I suggest if you can, you take the seaplane. This will give you views, because you're not very high up, of sharks and turtles from above, along with shipwrecks, and you will even be able to see Fort Jefferson as you pull up to the island. This is also probably the least crowded of all the national parks in the east, and it does mean you can have a very remote, incredible island experience. This is definitely a spectacular start, and the park itself has so much to offer. If you are into history, this is one of the best. Fort Jefferson is such a beautiful structure. It is impressive in size, scale, and scope, and I like everything about walking around learning about the history of this place. There's a lot of unique facts, such as the fact that Samuel Mudd, who was associated with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, was held prisoner on this island. And surrounding the island, there is plenty to enjoy. If you enjoy Florida's wildlife, you'll definitely enjoy this park because they have tons of birds around here, from egrets to herons to pelicans to frigate birds. There is a lot of fantastic bird watching. I also find that below the water, the wildlife is spectacular. I think this is some of my favorite snorkeling anywhere, and I would even take it over Virgin Islands. On top of having several sea turtles, sharks, barracudas, and much more. The coaling docks have such vibrant coral on them that navigating through the coaling docks is among my favorite snorkeling experiences I've ever done. This is somewhat an otherworldly experience, especially considering you can go here just from walking off a beach. It's not deep sea snorkeling, but it's just as impressive as a deep sea snorkeling adventure. There's not hikes here, so if you enjoy hiking a lot, you probably will not think this is the best of best national parks in the East. However, when you have the stellar history, the wonderful wildlife, and just a glorious place to either sit on the beach, snorkel, walk around, and just immerse yourself in nature and history, this one is like a step back in time, and Dry Tortugas definitely deserves a lot of respect. That said, it is still second place to the number one spot, which is... Acadia National Park in Maine. Many have talked about the fact that I need to get to Acadia as soon as possible. And last month, I did. And those who said it was the best in the East, I think you were correct. This coastal park has something very special about it. I don't think in terms of scenery, it is technically among the best of best national parks, though in the East it probably is. But I enjoy my time here so much because the recreation is practically unrivaled. In terms of hiking, you have so much to enjoy. From Beehive Trail, to Penobscot Mountain, to Acadia Mountain, to Scudic Head, there is more than enough hiking to fill weeks of travel on Acadia. And the scenery here is also quite surprising. You have the rocky coast that you are probably familiar with from photos of Bass Harbor Head Lighthouse and similar. But right behind those rock formations, such as Thunder Hole and Otter Cliffs, and so much more, you have mountains, ponds, lakes, rivers, sand beaches, and there is quite a bit to see. This park definitely is among the most popular 
and sometimes most crowded. But that is for good reason. People only go to a place if they think it's going to be good, and that is why millions make their visit here every year. And one of the most popular spots is one I highly recommend. That is Cadillac Mountain. Whether you hike or drive to the top, any time of day, the view from above is awe-inspiring. And I feel it's one of my favorite sunrises and favorite sunsets I've had in any national park. So Acadia is one with unbelievable hiking, fantastic scenic drive, plenty of other recreation to partake in. There's abundant wildlife, diverse and impressive scenery, and a very sentimental experience for me that kind of just made me want to tear up because it really was a quintessential national park experience I had. And if you are not bothered too much by bugs and crowds in the summer, I think Acadia is definitely the national park for you. And for me, it is the best national park in the eastern United States. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this ranking. Comment down below your favorite eastern national parks. And there is a certain national park I think many are surprised I omitted. I guess in the comments we can discuss that. Subscribe for more national park content, I'll see you next time.